Hey, church family. My name is Tom Mayette. I'm a proud member of South Tampa Fellowship. Um, today I'm in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 12 to 16, also known as the Davidic Covenant. Um, just want to share a little bit about what God has shown me in my quiet times as it relates to these, these scriptures. First, I'll, get, I'll read through the verses. It says, When your days are complete and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your descendant after you, who will come forth from you, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he will be a son to me. When he commits iniquity, I will correct him with the rod of men and the strokes of the sons of men. But my loving kindness shall not depart from him, as I took it away from Saul, whom I removed from before you. Your house and your kingdom shall endure before me forever. Your throne shall be established forever." So as I was kind of meditating on these these verses in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 12 to 16, I'll also have an NASB translation um, if you're curious, there are really two things that stuck out to me. Um, the first was this word forever. Um, in verse 16, the word forever is used um, repetitively two different times. And in my experience in God's word, whenever we see repetition, whenever I see repetition, I believe that God is trying to get my attention on something, that it, that it warrants my attention, that it's important. And as I reflected on this word forever, um, it was a good reminder uh, to maintain an eternal focus. Uh, my family has been flooded out by Hurricane Helene, and these days we really live in day-to-day, -day, just trying to get through the day. Um, and the Lord graciously reminded me that um, I need to keep my sights on, on Him. And He brought to my attention... Uh, just all the good works that he has done from the beginning um, until now and will continue to do. Um, and so I was grateful for that reminder that, that he is still very much at work and to keep my eyes on him. The other thing that stuck out to me was in this Davidic covenant, you know, God is making a promise to David that his house will endure forever. We know ultimately that's fulfilled in Christ and that kingdom will last forever. But it had me stop and think about the promises of God. You know, and I, I, I use that phrase often, but, you know, I went to the Lord and just said, you know, do I, do I know what these promises are? You know, are they written on my heart? Um, is it something that I can re recall easily? And so I sat there and asked the Holy Spirit, you know, Holy Spirit, bring to, bring to mind just all the different promises um, of God. And the Holy Spirit graciously had them flood, flood in. And I have them written down here in my journal, some of the ones that came to mind in the quiet time. You know, He promises us peace and protection, unfailing love, uh, blessing, salvation. He promises us that all things will work together for our good. He promises us an eternal inheritance to finish the work that He started in us, to supply our every need. He promises us an abundant life, eternal life, that He will return for us. He promises to strengthen us, to bring us comfort, to answer our prayers. He promises us everlasting life. And uh, the Holy Spirit just graciously, graciously brought all these promises to, uh, to my heart in that, that time. And the Lord is good on those promises. Um, I have a reference verse in my, my Bible to 2 Corinthians verse 20 that says, um, As many are the promises of God, they are yes in Him. So His promises are eternal and, and unbreakable. Um, so we, um, as I reflected on these forever promises of, of God, um, you know, he drew my attention to the work that he has done in uh, generations of, of my family that surround me, um, the work that he's done in my parents' lives and in my in-laws' lives, um, the work that he's done in, in their children's lives, um, and the early evidence of faithfulness he's displaying in, in my children's lives. Um, you see, we are currently displaced because of Hurricane Helene, um, and that's true, but that also doesn't change the true nature of God's forever promises. In fact, for us, it's it's confirmed them. You see, spending time with the Lord first thing in the morning, uh, that's a practice that my wife and I cultivated um, in our individual walks before we met each other. Um, and it's one that we've chosen to carry forth in our marriage. So, excuse me, on, on most mornings when our, when our four children come out, sorry, three children, one can't walk, Three children come out of their their rooms in our uh, in our house. They they come out into the common area. They see their mom and their dad in each of our respective corners, spending time with the Lord first thing in the morning. You know, we're in His Word. We're journaling. 
uh, we're praying. And my prayer has always been that seeds are being planted in my young children's hearts, um, that the message is being you know, reinforced that in this family, we start our day with the Lord, um, that uh, we give him what's 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 right, what's first, not what's left. Now, these days, since we've been displaced, uh, my family, me, myself, and my four children, uh, we live at my in-law's house um, uh, with Mark and Cheryl Dillon. They've graciously taken us in. Um, and one of the uh, areas that came to mind when I was reflecting on these verses of the goodness of God is that now when my children come out of their rooms and come down to the common area of the house that they're living in, they don't just see their mom and dad um, having quiet time with the Lord. They see their father-in-law having quiet time with the Lord around this same table every morning. And so they walk into the presence of, of the Lord, and they now have two generations of family that know the Lord, um, that trust the Lord, that have experienced His love, um, and that, that are part of this, this kingdom, uh, this eternal kingdom that God talks about here in 2 Samuel 7. That thousands of years later, we sit here, knowing the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Um, part of that kingdom that was promised to David, that was fulfilled in Christ, that will live on forever. Um, and my kids now now see that. It's not just my parents, it's also my grandparents that um, spend time with the Lord every, every morning. And um, that is a blessing that I couldn't have cultivated in my life. That's an example of a promise of God that has come through a flood, um, that my, my kids are now seeing what it's like to you know, uh, worship the Lord every, every morning. Um, <laughs> recently we had, um, uh, my wife's 92 year old grandmother with us and, um, you know, naturally her physical strength and, uh, physical health are fading. Um, and one evening we had, um, the, the family over here for, for dinner. And, uh, in fact, we sat around the same table, uh, four generations, her children, her children's children, her children's children's children. We sat around this table and we, we prayed for four generations of believers. And um, it started with my son, my oldest son, Rob, who's five and a half years old. He kicked off the prayer. And we went around this table and it ended with Grandma Donna Johnson. And uh, I don't want to speak for everyone, but frankly, I don't think we expected to hear much from her. I think we thought the prayer was going to end there, but it didn't. She said, um, and I'm trying to recall it accurately. She said, thank you, Lord, for these people that are around this table with me. <laughs> she said, um, she said, um, they are a blessing to me. I have nothing to complain about. I just thought that was an amazing picture of the promises of God. Um, that around that table, you know, despite all the wanderings and the doubting and the missteps and the rebelling that characterized so many of our earthly experiences, yet we were still there sitting around the table worshiping the same true God for generations. And just an incredible reminder of God's faithfulness to work uh, through generations and that His promises still hold true. And so I, I guess just in closing, like what do the forever promises of God mean to me? It means, you know, peace and and comfort as I continue to witness God's faithfulness play out across generations. You know, it means that I don't I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to be demanding. I don't have to parent out of fear. Um, that I can rest in in His grace and be confident in His promises. Um, that they're going to play out in my kids' lives as I've already witnessed, and I can trust that. Um, I can trust that he will deliver on those promises. You know, in the book of Joshua 2145, another reference verse I have here in this section, it says, um, all of the none of the promises that God had for the house of Israel failed. All of them had come to pass. And we know in Hebrews 13, 8 that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So it means that I can just rest and trust. Um and, you know, it does mention multiple times in here that God will build David a house. And so that would be, that'd be kind of cool too. Um, <laughs> but um, 
anyway, that's what I got out of uh, 2 Samuel 7, verses 12 to 16. And just thanks for letting me share. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, um, I just praise you, God, for showing up in my quiet times, Lord, and just uh, speaking to me, Lord, and reminding me to maintain an eternal focus, Lord, um, to, uh, to appreciate the work that you have done across generations, Lord, thousands of years later, thousands of years later, from this promise that you spoke to David, documented in your word, Lord, um, that we could sit here also as believers in, in you and partake in that eternal kingdom, Lord. And um, I just thank you for the ways that you are working in our life, Lord, um, that you continue to deliver on your promises, God, that you can be trusted, Lord, and that we can rest um, in that grace, Lord. Um, I lift up this family um, and others, Lord, and, and just pray that they too experience these forever promises of you and continue to fall uh, in love with you, Lord. I ask all these things in your son's heavenly name. Amen. Amen.